Hey, my beautiful normies and non-normies. How are you guys doing today? I really do hope that by the time you get this podcast or the YouTube video, everything is going awesome, super duper 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 fantastic. Go ahead, boo-boo, because I already know you want to be in the camera. Because the moment you heard me saying, hey, you you came running from the table. Go ahead. So, hi, Normies. Hi, who? Normies. Normies. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Good job, good job, good job, good job. So, we're going to sing the song, That's, That's I Need Your Love. Love and I need your time. You make it right. Aww. He's so cute. Alright, can I get back to work now? Thank you. Um, so. Hello. Yeah, uh, today's Monday, like I was saying. Um, it's 2.49 in the afternoon. Um, which means I probably started this at 2.48, whatever. August 22nd. Sorry, I got to work, but it just didn't come out. Um, so yeah, so today is a very interesting, 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 interesting day. You see this other tooth, y'all? Sorry, podcasters, y'all can't see. See this other tooth, y'all? See that? Yeah. Don't let your mental health get bad, okay? Don't. Don't. This is not even what this episode is going to be about, but I'm saying it now because I'm watching myself in the camera. Don't let your teeth get bad, please. Don't let your mental health... I mean, I know... I mean, mm, what are the words I want to say? Boo, you got to lower that a little bit, mama. I know that... Um, when you're going through your depression, your mental breakdown, mani- maniac, um, manic um, episodes, or whatever the case may be, it is sometimes hard to take care of your hygiene. You know what I'm saying? For some people, it's taking showers. For some people, it's even just getting out of the bed, period. Some people just cannot make it out of the bed when they're having, when they're in their scenarios and in their episodes. And much less you're going to be able to parent that way. You know what I'm saying? It's just very difficult. But after looking at my teeth, and me saying what I'm saying right now, my biggest downfall was my teeth. It wasn't taking a shower every day. It was my teeth. And even though I had the chronic, you know, I was having already chronic pain and struggling with, like, I couldn't bend down because of my lower back and certain things like that. But um, I still, you know, did my hygiene except for my teeth. For some freaking reason, my teeth were just the one darn thing. I just, I don't know. I just couldn't. I just didn't. And it's not that I didn't have toothpaste or a toothbrush or none of that. I had it all. I just, I don't know. Mentally, I could not come to brush my teeth. I just still am baffled by it. And now that I'm seeing these ugly teeth, you see? My enamel is leaving all of my teeth. And I use Sentadine. And my enamel is... And I use Sentadine because I don't want the nerves, you know, the cold, hot thing. I don't have that problem because I use Sentadine. But, see? That one has no enamel at all. It's gone. And half of the tooth is cracked off. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Please take care of your hygiene. Please. Little kids, if y'all watching, teenagers, if y'all watching, stop playing. And I really think that coming down to the south, the water is different than the north. And I really feel like the water played a big part in it too. Huh? And I really feel like the water played an part in it too. But... Yeah, take care of your hygiene. Don't let whatever episode you're going through stop you from taking care of yourself. It's okay that you're going through your scenario. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that while you're going through your scenario, 
please take care of yourself. Like, at the moment, none of it is going to matter, but try to push the thing forward after you get past the scenario. Like, now, it's now, ever since my tooth cracked, and I'm really on it. Like, I'll literally forget. And, like, yesterday, I forgot to brush them in the morning. I'm still going through my episode. Like, I'm trying to, my postpartum, I'm trying to get out of my postpartum depression completely. So that it'll just be the depression. Um, Okay, mama, me. Okay. And... I real I yesterday I was like I'm doing all my stuff whatever. Then out of nowhere, I was like, "Wait, did I brush my teeth?" And I'm like rubbing my tongue through my teeth, and I'm like, I "Don't feel like I did." Let me go brush some suckers now. It was like three in the afternoon, so I went and brushed my teeth. Um, but I tried to be cautious of it now that I I learned my lesson, but it's too late now. Like I'm barely holding on to my teeth. So, yeah. Please take care of yourself. <clears throat> Please take care of your hygiene. And if you're someone <clears throat> who's a mental health supporter, advocate, whatever, please make sure that the person that you are helping or assisting or watching out for takes care of their hygiene. I don't care if they get irritated with you. Be like, I just saw this girl on YouTube. And uh, she let her mental health get the best of her. And uh, baby, her teeth look like who done did it and ran. And my teeth never look like this. Ever. Ever. You look at a video from a year ago, my teeth were not like this. But I know that that long time that I went without taking care of them, which was like almost two years, like of not really brushing them and doing the dental hygiene piece, didn't help either. So... I'm just throwing that out there. Yes, I'm really... My teeth are like... I've, I've never really liked my teeth. But... My smile was my thing. And now I'm so self-conscious when I smile. Especially when I'm paying attention. I'll like... Close mouth smile, I won't. You know, like that big nice smile I usually get what like I'm doing right now and I'm happy. I try not to because I don't want people to see that damn too. Which is dumb because when I'm talking, you can see it. So it just, I don't know. But it's just a mental thing for me, I guess. But yeah, so on to our normal programming. Updates, updates, updates. Let's provide some updates. For my podcasters, I left y'all with some very raw emotional episodes that I have not posted up on YouTube and still I'm not sure if I'm gonna post up on YouTube even though I did record them um but today was supposed to be the day that the cleaning lady was coming so the baby's godmother was paying for a cleaning lady to come to help us out to get the house back on square one so that I can get back on top of the two younger ones you know what I'm saying getting out of their old habits Um, But it'll help my oldest one help me. So, the lady comes, right? She comes about 15, 20 minutes early. She's sitting in the car the whole time. Then we all go outside exactly 1 o'clock when she's supposed to be coming in. She comes in. Beva shows her the room. Beva shows her what's supposed to be done. Huh? No. That's my food. Then 10 minutes later, she um comes out, right? I think it was like 10, it was like 15 minutes later. She comes out, yes, bye. She comes out and she was like, is this a motel? And then I was like, it's like an extended stay slash suite slash motels. They don't have any housekeeping. There is no housekeeping here. So the day that you move in, You get one roll of toilet paper that's already in the apartment. I think we got, like, did we get towels? There were no towels here when we moved in. There were, but it was not even for four people. It was... It was one towel, wasn't it? It was two towels, two hand towels, and one for, for 
Okay, so there was two towels, two hand towels, and one floor mat. And that's it. And that's it. Like, that's all you get. You don't get no housekeeping. There's, there is no housekeeper in reality here at all. The person who was the housekeeper was Whiteboard, which I used to see all over my videos. Whiteboard left. And even then, they didn't really use them for housekeeping. Correct. And even then, they didn't use them for housekeeping. They used them for maintenance. Because once you rent the room, nobody comes to clean the housekeeper is only meant to clean the room when you leave. That's it. Like, that's all. Nothing else. So, I explained that to her. And then, she, like, a whole, like, 20 minutes later, she, she comes out the car and she was like, Well, my boss said that we don't do these type of situations, um, but I'll sweep and do the bathroom. I'm like, we, her godmother paid for a whole clean service. Like, I'm not going to let her pay you just to sweep and do the bathroom. I'm not doing that. You're not going to get paid for just that. Um, so I told the baby godmother what was happening. And she was like, well, do you want her to just clean the bathroom? I'm like, Jesus, I'm not going to let you spend your money. You know what I'm saying? For something so basic. Like, but the lady had already started to sweep. So the lady leaves. Um, she was like, just tell her to cancel it and she'll get a refund. And then the lady leaves, and I was like, well, y'all website needs to specify that y'all won't do motels or extended stays or whatever they consider this. Um, but the little bit that she did sweep is letting my daughter see a difference, and it did help her out. So now, like, we'll be able to get, like, for example, here, Viva. This is what we did before the lady came. So the biggest part in this room that was that gets really fucked up is where the laundry is and it was Beba's desk that was just all fucked up on the bottom and on the top so we had already tackled that because I was not going to make somebody else clean that since that was you know what I'm saying like something else so we did do that um hold on I'm trying to move you guys okay so you see how now it looks like that because we still have to go in the bags and art supply separate them figure out where, which bin is going to go into what and then down there is no longer the mess that used to be by her desk that you guys will see like whenever we did anything so this is what we're looking like now um we did all of that yesterday and the day before um, I guess the motivation helped her a little bit with knowing that the person was coming and we needed to get this done. Um, so, but that was the biggest problem was her desk area. Like, that's what really made the rest of the room just look really jacked up. So now, I'm confident that by the end of the week, we should have the whole entire house, like, organized and situated. Because we do have to go through all those art supplies. And, um you know, organize it so that she can actually use the desk. Um, because, you know, with the homeschooling, I have to have, they have to have a space. But I just wanted to tell y'all that and update y'all with that. Because it was just like, it blew my mind. Because I'm sitting here looking at her. So you really think you should walk away with $100 just for sweeping a floor and cleaning a bathroom that's going to take you 20 minutes to clean? Like, mm, no, it's okay. I could just have my kid clean it. Like, and now, like, okay, so put it like this. Beba. I don't know why I bit the food. Knowing one, I'm talking. And two, I'm full. Why did I do that? It makes no sense. I'm literally full and I take a baby swallow of the soda. I don't have room. So why did I just do that? Because now my stomach is not my friend. Damn, I wasn't thinking. I just really reached over and just... Ooh, give me a second, you guys. My stomach is really hurting. I did the gastric sleeve, so I am limited on the amount of food that I can eat. Which is why I'm very cautious when I take my bites and I eat. 
because when the pain kicks in, it's it's a bad pain. Like, it's bad. And, um... Oh, Lord. I need to digest quick, and I know that's not going to happen. I know I just smoked a cigarette, but I'm stressed out right now. Because I just did the dumbest thing in the world. Knowing my stomach was already at its capacity. Why would I put myself through that again? I don't know why. Uh. I feel like I want to throw up. I'm trying not to throw up. Because the last time that I did, I got the illest body cramps in my lower back, the middle of my back, my stomach, rib area, like, my sides. It was bad. It was bad cramping. I don't know if that's something to do with the lack of potassium. Yeah, I don't know if that's to do with the lack of potassium. But, um, but yeah, so, Bev hasn't been on meds for about a year because the psychiatrist that she was at before was a child spot and they were supposed to transfer her over to the adult section the appointment everything was set up but the people dropped the ball and didn't respond back to no calls so we didn't have a psychiatrist appointment set up till september so because i know mentally she's all over the place she asked for some sanitizer like but the top's not there just open it and just give her some i mean it's There you go. Now you got hand sanitizer. Um, sorry, you guys. But what was I saying? What was I saying? Okay, so she has been trying really, really hard, and I gotta like really, 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 really like congratulate her because she's been holding on for a long time without no meds. Been trying not to have a full mental, <gasps> excuse me, a full mental breakdown. Like, so I can only push her but so much and my son hasn't been on meds either so I can only push him but so much also and he with his ODD's oppositional defiancy disorder forget it getting him to do anything that you want him to do is already a fight to begin with like you're already fighting the moment you need to tell him to do something like you get the illest attitude from him you he makes you feel like he makes me feel more handicapped than what I actually am half of the time because of how he reacts he doesn't want to get off the phone like his life is on that phone his world according to him is on that phone like which is not your world is the rest of us that are out here like hello but anyways so by the cleaning lady doing what she did it let beva see a difference in the room that she couldn't see before so even though she was doing these things herself she wasn't getting anywhere far because she couldn't see a difference. She would actually ask me, do you see a difference? Because I don't. And then she would get discouraged. And I'd be like, no, there is a difference. There's a big difference. You know, and then I'd have to keep pushing her to try to do what she's done so far. So now that she has a little bit of breathing room. Yes. Can you leave me alone so that I can finish, please? You bypass Delano. You bypass Beba. Like, why do you do that? Anyways, I'm just saying a lot of things in my head that I can't say out loud. Sorry, you guys. I just had to let out the anger because I... There's a lot of things that she does that I don't agree with and I do not like. And I want to break her out of it. But I have... I, I got to be cautious with it. But anyways. So, yesterday, we ended up getting a phone call from the psychiatrist that she wasn't supposed to see until September, the middle of September, saying that they can actually put her in today. Was she willing to see the, you know, the psychiatrist today? And I'm like, hell yeah, because that means I'm going to get on the meds faster, which means we're going to be able to keep this place clean, and everybody else is going to be pissed because we're really going to be on them like white on rice. So, you know, we did do the appointment, and I got to say it was a little rocky in the beginning. Like, the lady did trigger me. 
and I did yell for people to like to get the hell away from me with the lady on the phone before I slip on her. Um, not a proud mommy moment, not at all. But she made a comment. She was like, ADHD. Um, you do understand that ADHD and bipolar cannot live in the same person. Excuse me. I have ADHD and a bipolar. Delano has ADHD and a bipolar. Biba has ADHD and bipolar. So you cannot sit here and tell me over this phone that there's no way you can live in the same person because we're living proof that it can. So then I, I snapped for her to just be able to just get you know away from me with the phone and later on when I talked to her again and she went to redo her statement, she fixed it. And redid her statement in a different way. And then I had to pause and tell her, see, the way you just said it now is a lot more respectful and a lot more understandable. The way you started off before, that triggered my whole bipolar and it triggered my whole soul. And I, it wasn't a proud mommy moment. It was not. It was not. But I hate when people tell me something that I know for a fact I have. Or I know for a fact I know. Like... Don't try to argue back and say that's not logical or possible when the fuck? So what, what have I been living this whole life, my whole life then? How, what have they been living their whole life then? Like, you know what I'm saying? But what she meant to say is like that when you have bipolar and you have ADHD, a lot of the symptoms look similar. So it can get misconstrued as each other. But all of us have been officially diagnosed with each one individually. Like looking individually at those traits. And all the tests have been individually for those specific conditions alone to see they're actually active within our mental health. And they are. They always have been. They always pop up. They always show up. So... Also, people don't understand that the way that we are, like the whole jumpy, jumpy, happy, happy, a lot of people take that as manic. That's just the way that we are. We're not manic. That's just literally the way that we are. I had to like tell one therapist, don't tell me that I'm manic because I know when I'm manic. And I can tell when I'm manic. I'm a big advocate for myself. I am not manic right now. I am literally with my ADHD everywhere because I haven't smoked. And she was like, when was the last time that you smoked? And I was like, uh, an hour ago. But you're triggering me, so it's gone. It's out of my system. That's when I had to switch therapists. The new therapist starts on Wednesday. Um, But yeah, so that's the update. That's what we are dealing with right now. We're just trying to finish getting a room together so that we can get everybody on track. And I especially need to be done with this before my son starts school. Because that's when I need to start the both kid, both girls on homeschooling, like officially, and get on that ball with that while I'm still doing the coaching and the coaching sessions and looking for new clients and things like that. Um, so we can continue to get on our feet and get out of here and get our own place. And people can stop threatening to take my kids, and people can stop threatening me that I'm not a good mother. Because that's just the frustrating part. Nobody's here 24-7 to help. And then all people do is point, point, point. So instead of just pointing, why don't you actually shut up and come help? Come help. Come help. Just shut the fuck up. Don't give me your input, your opinion. I don't give a fuck about it. Come help. CPS themselves ain't even fucking up. And you going to threaten me with the same motherfuckers that have left me here. That then closed the case twice and then left me here trying to figure it out on my own. And the second time I was already in the wheelchair when they didn't provide any type of help. The first time at Dama at least got some clothes. The second time, nothing, 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 nothing. First time we got food too, but the second time, nothing, nothing, not a darn thing. Nothing at all. It was like crickets, the whole 45 days or whatever they take down here but um yeah like don't don't come for me and threaten me when 
I'm the one wiping all these tears. I'm the one trying to keep them mentally stable. I'm the one trying to make sure that they're not having any more damage than what they already have. I'm the one holding hands and I'm the one letting them know it's going to be okay. We're going to get on our feet. Like, don't stress. Don't worry. We're going to make this work. Like, ain't nobody else over here consoling these kids. Ain't nobody else over here trying to help these kids. And then if we keep it even more honest... If we even go into more transparency. When I went through what I went through, where was all the help that is trying to quote unquote help now, but is really pointing fingers? Where was it all when I really needed? Mom, huh? They look cute. Yes, you do, my love. You always look cute. Look cute in this little hat. All right, can I finish what I was doing? Thank you. Yes, but your head's going to be hot. All right, if you say so. So, um, like, why are we, why is everybody always so busy about pointing fingers and not, not helping? Like, people are so keen about pointing fingers and not helping. And then those that actually need the help end up feeling helpless and alone, just feel attacked. Like, all people do is attack, 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 attack. Why are people attacking me? Like, hello, do you think that... Those of us that have mental health choose to be born with mental health. Do you think that those that have mental health choose to, you know what I'm saying, have it affect them on a daily basis or whenever it does affect? Like, come on. That's like saying, I chose to be in a wheelchair. You, When I didn't, I never knew this was part of my future in any shape, way, or form. Somebody pause her her tablet. She's not even watching it. So, yeah. That is the update. That is what we are dealing with. And I'm not letting... One thing I am proud of right now is I'm not letting it affect me mentally. Um, I didn't spaz, I didn't flip, I I wasn't mean, I wasn't, I didn't, you know, overreact, I didn't underreact, I didn't do anything, I just, I stayed mellow. Told myself I was not going to be triggered, and that's a big accomplishment for me. That's a very big win for me, very big win for me, because the moment that I feel like people are, are, BSing me or trying to be slick or funny or something, it always has my, my, you know, uh, survival flight, like, comes on like that. It's just like, it's crazy. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't know how to explain it. Um, what else? What else do we have going on? There's nothing else going on. So that's pretty much my update for y'all. Like, Yeah, I think that comes to the end of that update. So I do hope that y'all enjoyed the podcast and I do hope that y'all enjoyed my drama. (laughs) And if anything, learn from my mistakes, please, and learn from my drama. Like, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Like, we really need to talk about that. Make sure that who you're in a relationship with before you even accidentally get pregnant or on purpose get pregnant are people that you can actually count on. Or before you have a seed with anybody. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female. I don't care if you impregnate somebody else. Just make sure that... Um, what are you doing? Oh, make sure that, you know, it's going to be a person that you can get along with. Because if you guys split up and things don't work out, you still have to see each other because you have a kid involved. Um, please make sure that you take care of yourself. You know, it's okay that your children come first. It's that's n- it's nothing wrong with that, but you need to be first along with them too. You know what I'm saying? You need to you need to realize that in order for you to take wait, I'm recording. Please stop. That in order for you to take care of them, you have to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to expect somebody else? I'm busy right now, please. Um How do you expect, you know what I'm saying, everybody else to be okay? Donald, she's asking for help. I know. Who are you talking to? I was trying to help No, I'm just saying it's because of your tone and how you're talking. Who are you talking to?
Y'all see what I mean? Y'all see what I mean? Then if I want to go knock him upside his head, I'll be wrong. I'll be utterly, completely wrong. And I'll be the worst mother in the, in the world. But it'll be okay for him to keep coming sideways at people. Like, people ain't worth nothing. Like, that's a no-no. That is a, such a no-no. Such a effing no-no. Like, it irritates and irks my soul. And it triggers me so bad. But anyways, please make sure you take care of your hygiene, please. Please make sure that you take care of yourself. Please make sure you regularly go to the doctor and just make sure that you're okay. Like, don't take anything as a joke. Stop. And if you do have mental health and you're not getting any help, please, please seek out help. I didn't get help for a very long time. And the neurologist is, one of the neurologists is telling me that the reason I'm in a wheelchair is because of my mental health. And if she is accurate and that is correct, then please be careful because unattended mental health can put you where you don't want to be okay so i hope y'all have a blessed day and thank you for listening so much and make it an amazing rest of your day whenever you do see this or hear this and don't let anybody stop your shine or tell you that you are not a valuable person because guess what you are a valuable person whether somebody else sees it or not as long as you see it that's all that matters all right be blessed y'all okay